Hello, my name is Ben, and this is my eighth OSCON in a row. All right. So, I'm going to talk about electronic communication because I spend a huge amount of time talking to people electronically, and it's really easy to forget how strange these mediums are. And I like to remind myself how strange they are. So, I'm going to start with the morals instead of ending with them. People take these things way too seriously. They communicate all day long and they forget how weird it is. And I like to notice when people cross the lines. And when they cross those lines, I like to remind them how absurd it is. So it all starts back in my move into my college dorm room. I keep getting calls for doctor's appointments, people trying to schedule appointments with me. It turns out doctor's office down the street has a typo and has my phone number in their pamphlet. But will they change it? No, they won't. Not when I call them. So I say, fine, OK. Phone rings. I start scheduling appointments for them. Yeah. I'd love to see the triplets tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Bring them in. See you then. And sure enough, the calls stopped. So that's an example of electronic communication. Now, um, I do uh, enjoy pretending to be other people in other forms, like interactive fiction. Huge fan. Uh, and you know, it's great to pretend to be somebody else immersed in another world. But the problem is, it doesn't always understand you. Um, it gets a little bit frustrating. So. I prefer to talk with real people in the world, like IRC, if you call those really people. I think they're real people. Um, I spent five years on an open source project, every day hanging in IRC, talking to people, coordinating people. And it's fun, but people seem to forget etiquette. They seem to forget that there are rules. And you know, especially trolls come in, and you, they try to rile you up. And I find the best solution is really to just drown them with love and affection. And they run away screaming. They're looking for arguments. Really, they think they just want abuse down the hall. So, there are other forms of electronic communication that we can, uh, we can use. For example, World of Warcraft. Great game. Um, it's a little bit addictive. It's a little bit strange. Um, people take it way too seriously. I played the game for a couple of years, and I'm like, what? lighten up, people. So my three friends, we rolled up three identical characters, three women. They decided they would be cheerleaders. They're going to do synchronized fireballs. They speak in valley speak, and people tried to get us to break character, and we wouldn't. We would just criticize their fashion, and that would just enrage them. So. That's fine. I got tired of World of Warcraft. I went back. Oh, you know, email. Here's a problem. Email. I have a really common last name. I, there are a lot of Sussmans in the world. Usually when people send me the wrong email, I just tell them and they say, no, no problem. Um, for some reason, this wedding planner kept bothering me. His army of servants kept emailing me. So I finally replied, just trying to scare them a little bit. Um, and, and sure enough, again, they stopped bothering me very quickly after some fake legal threats. So again. People seem to lose all sense of what's appropriate. Um, now let's go back to IRC. I, I fell in love with this robot library that lets you create IRC robots. So I wrote a Pinky bot. I took all of Pinky and the Brain, everybody knows Pinky and the Brain, and put all of Pinky's statements into the robot. And it's, it's just a way to remind you how weird IRC is, right? If you take it too seriously, here's Pinky to say something strange. Speaking of weird, Twitter is very strange too. This is my favorite person to follow on Twitter. Because when you see these tweets, interposed with your friend's deep philosophical statements, it gives you some perspective on what, what are you doing at the computer right now. OK, so back in IRC, I took the pinky bot. I decided to do something useful. I turned it into a, a bot that actually moderates a game of werewolf. Yes, werewolf. It got a great following. I was like, all right, you, you can do useful things with IRC. It's, it's kind of fun to do that. So meanwhile, I was uh, leaving my job. I had just accepted a job at Google. I was getting kind of bored. I had only a couple weeks left, sitting in IRC, answering the same questions over and over and over. And I thought, well, wait. What if I replaced myself with a robot? Would people notice? So I went and looked at what are the things I usually say. I went through the logs, and I programmed the bot to say all the things I typically say. Um, and I even put a pause in there to seem like I was typing, make it realistic. So to test it out, I put it into a chat room with Eliza, the psychotherapist. Now, this was not necessarily a good idea. It was a very, very, very boring conversation. Nobody was taking charge, didn't really go anywhere. But you know, at least it was, it was believable. So great, I decided it was time to throw my bot into the chat room. I logged the bot in as me under the name Sussman, and I logged in anonymously to watch, and I was like, hey, look, after a couple of days, it snagged somebody. I was like, yes, I tricked them. That's hilarious. Now, when are they going to realize it's a bot? And you know, a week goes by, and two weeks go by, and then, um, oh, it snagged another person. All right, this is so funny. Now, when are they going to notice that it's just a bot? And you know, after, after three weeks, I just gave up. I just took it down. The experiment was too successful, um, which is depressing in a way. But there is a moral to the story here. And the moral is, you are not as important as you think. You are not a unique snowflake. <laughs> but more importantly, you need to keep perspective on how absurd some of these electronic forms of communication are. And remember that they are not a substitute for face-to-face -face communication. And that is it. Thank you.